Let's be real about mutual parting of ways. <laughs> AKA he got fired. <laughs> right. <laughs> what is up, everybody? It feels good to be back. Seems like I know we didn't record last week, but it feels like ages. Good to be back. Hopefully, you guys don't, you know, mutually to, you know, agree to part ways with the, with the podcast. Y'all are here for the long time. Yep. We yep. here, yep. ain't it? <laughs> oh, that's mutual to part ways. <laughs> Whatever, man. That's just a nice way to ride on your day off, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to go the opposite of mutually parting ways. As, well, I guess it was uh, mutually parting ways. Since Julio Jones, the game out that he did actually demand a trade a couple months ago, and the Falcons kept it quiet to try and basically secretly trade him. And uh, supposedly, it's not official, but supposedly the deal is supposed to be done within the 24 to 48 hours that he was traded to the Tennessee Titans for a second round pick and either a fifth or a swap in the picks or some other stuff. So, hey, y'all want me to go first, y'all? I mean, well, look, the, the floor, floor is, is yours, yours buddy. Is, the floor is, is yours. <laughs> All right. So, my shirts just do it. At the Titans, they finally just did it, right? I, I did say on the last Let's Tighten Up episode, which I'm dropping a new one this Tuesday when the trade is, is official. Uh, but, say on my last episode, I didn't believe, and I said on trolling now, I didn't believe who was getting traded, period. I didn't see. I, well, at that time, I didn't know Atlanta couldn't sign any rookies. So, at that point, and also, I didn't know Julio actually demanded a trade until the Shannon Sharp stuff happened. That happened right afterward, which we were talking about last week, but we didn't record. So, a lot of those things, I didn't think he was getting traded. So, once I knew that he was getting traded, I thought, okay, it looked like the Titans were beating the lead, but I don't trust my teams. Miami Heat, point of example, uh, James Harden. I don't trust my teams to do that. My teams normally don't do that, especially the Titans. They really don't. They normally just kind of stay pat. Uh, we find what we got. They don't ever make the move that could potentially put them over the top. So now that's finally not officially, but supposedly officially happened. Hey, I'm excited, but Super Bowl bus straight up. I ain't I, that's all I gotta say on it. Y'all hear more on let's tighten up Super Bowl bus. I, I think, I think that's, that's a good mentality to have too, uh Sharky is Super Bowl or bus because y'all have a squad. Like, I'm pretty sure this gonna be everybody's Madden team. Like on paper, y'all legitimately have one of the best arguably the best roster, you know what I'm saying, in the in the league. So I think the the mentality of championship of us is the right mentality to have. I mean he uh John Robson replaced the whole defense this offseason. So it's up to the player. We're basically what happened here. So we had a lot of Times fans. I don't know why they don't like our general manager. They don't like J Rob. Why are J Rob this dumb? We do had to win the season the last five years. But it's neither here nor there. He basically put out the pressure on Mike Vrabel and Ryan Tannehill. Staff doesn't produce. Yeah, I agree. I think you know definitely kudos to y- for y'all to y'all for going out and getting a player such as Julio Jones. I think you know if you are any other team in the AFC, um, you are officially worried about you know how you're going to defend you know Julio Jones on one side and AJ Brown on this side, and then you got a tank or you got you know you got Derrick Henry in the backfield. So I have no earthly idea. Um, you know, how teams are going to defend it, um, even if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers or even if, you know, you're the Cleveland Browns or Kansas City Chiefs, good luck, you know, being able to start, you know, being able to, you know, slow down that offense. I think my two concerns um, for this trade or for the Titans in general going forward is, you know, one, target two, you just, you just hit it. Like, what does that defense look like? You know, offense, you know, to a, to a point hasn't been the issue. You guys have you know, been able to put up points with it, you know, with Tannehill, with A.J. Brown, um, and, you know, the, what you guys had on offense is it was the defense. It was, you no know, not being able to, you know, get off, get off the field on third down. It was not being able to rush the passer. So um, with some of the moves that you guys have made, shout out to, uh, you know, uh, Bud Dupree, you, that, that signing, I think that will be, I think that will bode well for you guys. So my, that's my first concern. And then my second concern, if you want to be 100 about it, it's Julio Jones hasn't been the most healthiest of receivers. He's, you know, missed a handful of games here and there. I think last year he only played nine to ten games. You know, part of that could have been, you know, just due to the fact that, you know, at, at the Atlanta Falcons have sucked for years. So, you know, part of that could have just been, you know, eh, I'll, I'll take a few games off here. We're only going to win four or five games this year anyway, so it's really no point in me, you know, trying to rush myself back. So 
that will be my own. Those are my two biggest concerns. You know, what you guys look like on defense, how much, uh, you know, how much you guys improve um, and then how much uh, or, you know, how much of a good production do you get from Julio Jones, which I think, you know, you should be able to do both well because Asia Brown came on really, really well at the, at the end of last season, too. So, you know, who's going to get what coverage, you know, who's getting double teamed, who's not. And then at the end of the day, if you want to double team your receivers, then, you know, good luck trying to stop Derrick Henry once he gets past you. So. Uh, definitely kudos to y'all. Yes, absolutely. Kudos to you guys uh, for pulling this deal off. I think rumors were going around prior to this one coming out. The deal was literally between the Titans and the Eagles who was going to pull the trigger. And I was like, well, he's just going to be in Atlanta because neither one of these teams are known for just pulling the trigger to go after Julio um, in this whole deal. So um, pretty much my only concern is what Skyler had. How, how you guys are going to look on defense is definitely going to be one. And, of course, Julio Jones' health. But you can chalk it up to him being in Atlanta for as long as he has. But the future is bright there. And I'm with you. Super Bowl to bust. And you guys should definitely, at this point, run away with the AFC South. Like, there's no questions about that. Unless they start Tim Tebow, right? Unless the Jacksonville Jaguars start Tim Tebow. I'm telling you, then they're gonna win. I'm, I'm telling you, because then they're gonna win. Tim Tebow was a ploy. Okay, I'm sorry. Get him back I'm sorry. Quarterback. I'm sorry. Open up that can of worms, Skyler. Come on, I'm man. Sorry. Come on, man. All he does is win. Okay, now two no, 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 no. <laughs> years. I say he was gonna be the star. His song. I say he was gonna win. Yeah, <laughs> hey, it's a hit song. I was saying that all he does is that, but that's that's neither here or there. <laughs> Um, I'll just say this. I can't believe what I just heard about Timothy. Um, but what I will say is the Falcons are are not the smartest team to me um, to trade, even though he is injury prone, Julio Jones for pretty much a second round pick. That's what you traded Mohamed Sanu for. Um, and to me, Julio Jones is a much better player than Mohamed Sanu. Um, and so the Titans stole this one uh, without a doubt. And in terms of the injury prone, he is. However, he's not going to have to run as many routes and deep routes as he used to because there's a running game now. Um, the Falcons haven't had a consistent running game since maybe Warg Dunn um, was in the backfield. Um, even when they lost in the Super Bowl to 28-3, to they still have a consistent run game. That was because their passing offense was so great. Um, and so kudos to the Titans for this one, man, and I'm looking forward to see what the Titans do this offseason. I mean, offseason, but literally within the season with 17 games. Um, we haven't talked enough about Bud being signed as well, um, which is going to be a huge, huge adjustment and huge move on the defense. People don't understand how great Bud probably was, um, even for the Steelers. Um, so I look forward to all this, man, but the Falcons are stupid. And I and I rest my case about that. Hey, man, I'm just happy as a Panthers fan on this spot that this actually solidified us being the number two team in the nfc south which is what hey i would love to see i think this trade what y'all gonna see is a what, what we're gonna call it a blake griffin effect shitty we can have that talk for another time because i'm not gonna be with you right now um but i think we're gonna we're gonna see a blake griffin effect and what i mean by that is atlanta has atlanta for the last few years and i think they wasted you know especially the last couple of years of julio's uh time and i think he's gonna get some new energy he's gonna get that nashville food uh, last hire Michael Turner. What up, Savage? What up, Savage? <laughs> <Nice. laughs> hey, wow, the, the, this move very definitely made Atlanta worse, so I'm definitely happy to see that move. Uh, my only question to you, Shark, is this, bro. Who do you see wearing number 11 going into next season? So I actually did some research while I was coming back from Nashville. Ironically, I just came back from Nashville, right? <laughs> hey. um, so A.J. Brown... D is he first said he would give up his dumpers because he was trying to get number one, but it's retired by Warren Moon. So his next video when he's recruiting uh, Julio, he said he wasn't giving up number 11, he gave him number eight. I was wondering why he gave him number eight. I look back, I wonder what Julio wore at Alabama. He wore number eight, so I think he's going to get number eight if I had to guess. Look at you doing your research, man. Let's go. Hey, Let's tie why we're here. Tie yeah. up. Because I thought the number was so random when you made the video. I was like, number eight. <laughs> I'm sure so random, bro. <laughs> hey, man. So, quick <laughs> story. That's what it was. Shark left and then Julio came in. Hey, hey. 
Let's go. <laughs> Can you make a trip to Carolina soon? <laughs> hey. Stay soon. <laughs> All right, man. Quick reactions, man. Uh, Scala. All righty. Quick reactions. You know, as we talked about, you know, Mitch mutually agreeing to part ways. And, you know, there are times, you know, as we get up there in age, we start to feel old. So when I got this ESPN alert early this week that Coach K was retiring, I, of course, felt old. So, um, again, for those that, you know, who have been very busy, for those who have lived under rock, Coach K, the great Coach K from um, Duke University, is retiring um, after this next upcoming season. Um, Coach K has led Duke to 12 Final Four appearances um, with five national titles. So he's calling it quits. He's calling it quits um, due to family reasons. And you can believe that if you want to believe that. So um, quick reactions. What do y'all what do y'all think? Do y'all feel, you know, as old as I do? Coach K has been, you know, at Duke since, you know, Probably we were all born except for shitty old age. Um, but how do you, the fit, right? <laughs> but how do y'all feel about you know Coach K retirement? Do you you know truly feel that you know part of the reason he's leaving is because of family reasons? I don't. It's as simple as this. He can't compete. It's just that simple. Is as the great Riley Freeman said on the Boondocks, uh, you pay the cost it is to do business, and when that cost get too high, you get out of business. Mm. So, Thanks, man. Hey, man. Man. so with this new uh transfer rule, with all these players being able to enter the portal and transfer without any penalty and be eligible to play right away. This is what led to Coach K eventually retiring because he, at this point, he's just like, well, I can't compete. And I think I said this in year one of Let's Be Real about how these guys, when they're quote-unquote recruited by these schools, they're being sold on possibility of being the star of the team or being this go-to guy or being possibly a lottery pick in the upcoming NBA draft. And then when things don't go the way that they want to go, they're going to want to transfer. And you seeing all of this play out like right before our very eyes. And now with everything that's going on with the transfer portal and now athletes are now have the capability to be paid, quote unquote, under the table. Now, Coach K was like, all right, I'm out. I, I can't compete with this. So, hey, but it's been a legendary run for him. Like you said, 12 uh, Final Fours, five national championships. Uh, definitely, definitely a first ballot Hall of Famer whenever they decide to put him in there. Not to mention his stint as coaching uh, Team USA as well. So uh, kudos to Coach K. And uh, let's just hope the rest of uh, his journey as far as life is concerned is a great one. Yeah, good point. Uh, I think, like, even with the Team USA, right, um, to kind of go against your, your point a little bit, uh, like he's no longer coaching Team USA. Uh, this would be the first time that, that, you know, somebody else coached since what the 92, right? 92. So like this, I think the writing on the wall was, was at that point when we saw Greg Popovich accept that, that, that invitation to be the coach for team USA. But also I think you do have to put COVID into the situation as well. Like when you're dead, when you're older, you've gotten used to spending time with your family. Like I'm pretty sure this is the most time he spent with his family, just like the, all of us, but for somebody who's been, you know, arguably the most legendary coach in, in basketball to have that time with your family, you kind of look at life different, in my opinion. I'm not saying this is what he did. I'm just saying if I was in his shoes, uh, this would kind of be my perspective. So I think that, you know, of course, he. I, I feel like Coach K can still compete, but he's older and, you know, COVID is, is kind of affected that decision as well. Like we said, the right on the wall was was when he didn't accept the bid to become uh, – to, to continue to be Team USA coach. But – Salute to Coach K, hell of a career, easy Hall of Famer, uh, first ballot one, one, once the time permits. But um, salute to Coach K, this does uh, bring down the level of, of, of you know, greatness that would be coming from the NCAA, which is, you know, what, what I want, period. Uh, the prestige, that's what I'm looking for. When you lose a prestigious coach like Coach K, it's like, dang, do I want to go to Duke? Who's going to be his replacement? There's so many questions. Um, about this program that that you know it do that like having Duke lose is like not having the Lakers in you know what I'm saying like everybody loves to watch Duke um and, and play some basketball so I think whoever they hire to replace them will be key and I hope it's a black man just throwing it out there I hope it's a black man but it's it not it's they've already announced it it's John they, they, they got a coach now 
Yeah, they've they've already you know had their meeting and already said who's going to take his place. It's going to be um, John Shire, who played on the team quite a few years ago. That's already in place, and I think the reason they went with him um, it, apparently is because he's the lead recruiter on a bunch of the recruits that they have coming in. So, and they don't want to lose those guys. She, 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 so you said he, he's a lead. They recruiter. could have hey, that's, that's hired cool. Nolan, bro. They could have hired Nolan. He's been on the staff for ages, bro. Right. No, I that's ain't taking. They, they could have hired Nolan. But I mean, for them to hire a, a a a scout, you know what I'm saying? That shows you where college basketball is heading. Like, it's not all about basketball really anymore. It's about hey, can you get this recruit to come to this school to help us win? So I think that that that's that's oh, we that's interesting. Yeah. Well, quickly, um, um, okay. Sure. Right, you go. Okay. Uh, my thoughts. I mean, simple. I think, I mean, it ain't surprising because he is getting older in age. He was, what, 73 or 74 now? 74. Um, and go back to Trevor's point. I mean, once you get to age and all the stuff that's happening, transfer market stuff, it, it's kind of, it gets harder. It gets a little more harder, right? It gets just a tad bit harder. Uh, and I don't know. I hope I don't like saying it wasn't nothing. It wasn't health related. It was strict. He said family, right? Okay. So that's good to know. Um, so just keep it. Yeah. Just keep in mind. I think it's, I think it's a mixture of, not being able to compete, but it's really the age that goes along with it. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand. But yeah, I wish him best of luck. Like I said, he has one more season uh, left. So make it a farewell tour. I don't like Duke. So I hope he'll make the tournament his last season. But you know, it's new here or there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there's a reason why Mike Shisefsky didn't like coach in the NBA because he couldn't handle free agency. Um, and we are literally into the dawn of NCAA doing more of a free agency. Um, but there's, there's no slight on his resume. Um, the resume speaks for itself. There's been coaches that have yet to even make the final four, yet alone win five uh, national championships, let alone five. Um, and so he is, again, we've already said his first ballot. Um, and, you know, best of luck. I think this is a season too late. Um, to Tuke's point about COVID, I think once we knew, I mean, we knew about COVID last year. Um, and that should have been a time for him to maybe to step down because that was, again, a new era that he wasn't really prepared for um, at his age. He's that's just not him. And so I think that might have been the year actually last year. Uh, but, you know, we may get the D-Way farewell tour, uh, whether they make the tournament or not. I could care less. Um, but sh- kudos to him and what he's done in transforming lives um, for it really realistically all the guys that came on this team, but you know, especially the men of color as well. Yeah, and I, I think to, to wrap this this topic up, I think it's I think it's two reasons why he retired. I think one is age, but I also think two, you know, to y'all's point about, you know, the transfer portal, because now it, with it being, you know, 2021 and you know the transfer portal, you know, who's in, who's out, you know, who's on the team, who wants to transfer it, you know, whether it's you know, freaking November, December is you're constantly having to recruit these days now. And I think you heard Penny Way, you know, Penny Hardaway talk about that. I think toward the end of last season is, you know, his job doesn't stop. He's constantly having to recruit because you never know at any point what, you know, what player wants to transfer, you know, back to another place. And so then when that player transfers, then okay, then now you got to find somebody else to replace him. And, and so that's constantly traveling. That's constantly, you know, calling and emailing and, you know, doing whatever you got to do to recruit these players. And I think, you know, it, he probably got to a point to, you know, where he was like, eh, you know, I could probably do without that. It's it's college coaches now that talk about that. I think Gino, um, Gino from, from UConn, he doesn't like the new transfer portal. Eh. And you like it or you don't like it, but you know, to each his own. So I think that's part of the reason. He's just it's it's the constant it's the constant recruiting. It's the con- and that's why you know some some coaches in the NBA don't want to do college basketball because it's it's the constant recruiting. It's the constant of you know going after 17, 18 year olds who at any point can change their mind. And I don't think you know at some point a lot of people don't want to deal with that, especially if you're seventy four years old. Right on, right on. Well. Like I said, salute to Coach K. And we're going to move ahead to his U- Team USA. To, uh, what? His Team USA players in the next league in the NBA with the playoff <laughs> up there. Too. All right. So we are well underway with the NBA playoffs. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Um, we'll go over the semifinals matchup. I know there is a game seven that has yet to be played that will be played later on today um and we'll get to that um shortly actually i'll just go ahead and start there 
So who will be matching up with the Utah Jazz uh, come next week? Who wins game seven tonight, um, guys? The Dallas Mavericks or the Los Angeles Clippers? Uh, we can keep the order as it's shown on the screen. So we'll start with Sheedy, Sharky, Toop, Skylar, and myself. All as well. Um, Mavericks. I got a question. I've been asking this on Twitter and nobody's answered. Didn't the World Series either last year, the year before last year? It was like the road or the Stanley Cup. The road team had won every single game in the series. I remember it happening recently. I don't remember if it was the World Series or Stanley Cup, though. I, 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 think, it I, think, it, I think it definitely happened in the NHL. I, think it was I don't recall it happening in baseball, though. But I'm almost positive it was in the NHL that that happened. Okay. Yeah. I'm it was good. NHL. I just can't remember if it was the finals or like the Eastern or Western finals. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it happened. I know, I know it happened recently. Well, it's about to happen in the NBA for the first time. You beat Dallas. Road teams winning. All games. Uh, I've said it once. I've said it before. Clippers and how many? Seven. I don't see Kawhi getting out mm-hmm. in the first round, but that's just me. Just my opinion. I, we, we'll, we'll wait for, for the next episode for that one. But Clippers and seven. Y'all been real disrespectful to the to the Clippers, man. And I, when I say y'all, I don't mean y'all. I mean uh, the, I the, 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 <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> Clippers and seven. Oh, girl, I thought you were going. No, no, go ahead. Um, I think it's. I think the Mavericks are going to win. I think if you watch, if you watch Game Six and the Game Six, a lot of it was Kawhi Leonard guarding Luka Doncic, and you can say for the most part he kind of slowed him down. But I think it was more so um, that Luka was extremely passive in the second in the second half, and I think you know as he's he's really torched the Clippers for the past two years. I think he's definitely going to want to, you know, get this W. Um, so I will go with the Mavericks to barely win this game. I'm hoping that the Mavericks win this game as a Lakers fan. I'm hoping the Mavs win this game because for parity purposes, um, I did pick the Mavs to win it in six, but for some reason, uh, the Mavericks missed a whole lot of open shots in game six. It took 45 45- plus from Kawhi, plus a breakout Reggie Jackson game just to even get it to game seven. And I don't expect any of that to uh, happen unless Paul George just so happened, just rises from the dead and drops 40. Um, And they haven't been able to stop Luka no matter what they've thrown at him. So uh, give me the Mavericks in in seven here to close this one out. And so... With that being said, I'll come back to that uh, semi-series later. Uh, We have one that is currently underway, currently right now, in the Eastern Conference with the Atlanta Hawks, the fifth seed Atlanta Hawks, matching up with the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, Real quickly, guys, just get you guys' predictions and takes on the series. Same order. Who you guys got? Listen, if... If Embiid is really hurt, um, this really does change the complexity of this series. But it, it doesn't just ch- change to me the complexity of this series. It will change the complexity of how the Philadelphia will move moving forward. This Atlanta team is much stronger than we probably predicted. Um, they are on a roll. They took down the Knicks that we all kind of thought were much better than winning one game um, against the Hawks. Um, but I, I would still give the Sixers their respect um, because I believe Benjamin who? Button? Um, <laughs> but I'm going to give respect to um, – I, I think – I don't. if Joel can play, give me Sixers in six. I agree. If he can play. If he can't play, if he can't play, I actually think the Sixers can be better – and win it in five. Oh. Interesting. I, mean, I got feel either way whether he's playing or not, but I didn't think it. I ain't gonna say. I thought about the same. Fit six, six is and six. Regularly right? play or not, he's playing game one right now. But yeah, feeling six. Oh man, this is this, yeah because I uh, the way Trey Young killed Savage and them. Like, they were the number one defensive team, right? 
So I'm thinking like these Hawks are for real. Like I really hadn't watched the Hawks this season to be straight up with you until uh, we saw them beat down the Knicks. But the Philadelphia Sixers, all the Sixers. But I have four or five brothers on here that talk that told me that Doc Rivers would get it his own way. And as Atlanta, Atlanta has been open since COVID started and they turned. And I think that kind of energy has put like Atlanta on a map. So forgive me, Savage. Forgive me, Benjamin. I'm going Hawks in seven. I'm going. I'm going Hawks, and especially if MB is playing. He he's not. He 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 he's not healthy. And the way Atlanta roll, and especially Steve roll with the Knicks, the damn Trey Young taking this Vita roll way too serious. So give, give me give me Hawks in seven. How about this country? Hey, you out here just capping. You so full of it. You full of it. Full of it, like the bro. You full of it. Nick. I think I was the only person to, you know, pick the Hawks in the last series. And I'm almost willing to go there. I'm almost willing to pick the Hawks in this series because Joel Embiid is not healthy. And I love what I saw from Trey Young last series. And I, I love the, you know, the villain role that he's taken. And I think of, you know, of most, if not all the teams in the playoffs right now, Atlanta's probably the healthiest. And I think at the end of the day, I think whoever wins this year's, um, you know, championship will probably have the most healthiest roster that anybody has had. Um, I'm going Philly in seven if Joel Embiid plays most of the games. If he misses more than two games, I'm rolling with two, but I'm actually going to go Hawks in six if he misses more than two games. Okay. Well, first and foremost, Savage, I need you to answer me what, what's going on with this Knicks offense because watching that series, oh, my God. Like, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 You That's need to answer me. Ask him about the defense. defense. We need to ask him about the defense. We'll ask about the defense, but offensively, yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, every time I looked up, Julius Randle was somehow taking a shot over three or four people, and it was just tough for them to get a basket. Well, you can probably chalk it up to do, but I'm also chalking it up to culture for not putting your players in positions to yeah, do stuff. So. <laughs> uh, but I, I do give the Hawks – I will give the Hawks credit for them actually coming in and smacking New York in the way that they did. Trey Young, like you said, has been sensational uh, all playoffs. But whether Embiid plays or not, Philly wins this series. Um, Embiid plays, Philly in six. He doesn't play, Philly in seven. At some point, Doc is going to put Ben Simmons on Trey Young at some point in this series, and that, and then who else from Atlanta is going to step up once Trey Young is kind of with them clamps put on him because of 16 Ben Simmons? But yeah, Solomon Hill, Solomon Hill. <laughs> All right, so we'll stay in the east, uh, with the second semifinals, um. Matchup which got underway just last night. Um, I'm pretty sure it may be a foregone conclusion, but I'm just gonna get you guys' take. Uh Bucks Nets. We know the Nets won last night convincingly, I might add, but Bucks Nets, who you got? Somehow Blake Griffin really revitalized this team with that hustle. And and he really to me was the difference maker in game one, once James Harden went down. Mike Boonholzer is gonna understand the assignment and he's gonna take care of business. I, I'm i gonna be the bad guy this entire show and I'm going bucks, six. Nice, give me Brooklyn and five. James Harden play or not, Brooklyn and five. Damn it, I wanna say a sweep. I want to say a sweep, but I'm going I'm to go gentleman sweep. Like, are y'all serious for everybody picking the Bucks? I just think that y'all pick the Bucks simply in spite of the Nets because y'all don't want the Nets to win. It's making y'all look pretty stupid in my opinion. Not stupid, too stupid, so pretty dumb in my opinion. But that's neither here nor there. I want to say sweep, but whatever. All the king sources, we got one king that just went down and one about to rise. So give me, give me Nets and five. Easy. Savage, you should have had, man, look. Since you're doing it, give me the Bucks in seven. 
since you're doing it. Give me the Bucks and seven. I, I, I think the only reason, the only reason Milwaukee lost their game, one, defensively, they were absolutely terrible. Two, they couldn't make a three point. Wait, defense, you know, they, they were absolutely make... terrible in game one. Their defense is terrible. Oh, I could have sworn, Trevor. I thought I was talking. I oh, thought yeah. we were <laughs> talking. Wow. Man, buddy. I, wow. I was talking. Defense? I'm going to say the Bucks in seven. I think the Bucks would have won yesterday. They did not make the amount of three point field goals that they normally make, that they are historically on are, are making. Drew Holiday is the reason I'm going Milwaukee Bucks in seven. Now, too, if you want to go, you can. You know, Blake, Blake Griffin had more rebounds than everybody, right? Just want to throw it's that out. Okay, there. it's one game. See, microwave society, one game. And you know, Let's jump shoot teams. teams don't, you know what? Whatever. I, I just said the same quote for the last few years: jump shoot teams don't win championships. I'm dying by that bridge. Nets and five. Come on now. Y'all are so and the Nets a jump shooting team? And the Nets a jump shooting team? No, the Nets are a bucket getting team. They know how to get buckets when it matters. Okay. okay. Can, Go ahead. Can, can, I, can I provide okay. my take on this series? Um, I'm actually going Bucks and seven as well because despite what happened last night, the Nets do not have an answer for Giannis. Do not have an answer for Giannis. I'm sorry. At some point, they're going to have to play DeAndre Jordan or something, and that's going to open things up for everybody. Drew Holiday is going to be big for them in this series. I can expect it. Uh, the Nets are going to be – it's going to be a tough out, but I'm going with the Bucks and seven. I want parity. I want no superstars in the remainder of this playoffs because I want fans out here to really appreciate the game of basketball and just – <laughs> that is a good one. They are a bucket getting team. I will give you that. But they don't have an answer for Giannis. And until I see that, and yeah, Blake Griffin did what he did, but can he sustain that over the course of this series? Which I don't think he can. So Bucks and seven. And that's the other thing. Drew Holiday had an off game. That ain't happening again. Sorry, like I don't care. I've seen him have plenty of off games. Who is Drew Holiday? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Drew Holiday had an off game. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll we we'll revisit this. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit. They have we'll some KD and Kyrie. No, we'll see. Let's get it. We get we we'll we'll, because we, we still got one more. We got one more matchup to cover out west. And, and that's what it is. Y'all are mad. Y'all Lakers fans are mad. <laughs> that's what it is. Y'all petty I'm, ass You're not Lakers fan though. Yeah, man. I'm not a Lakers. And y'all heat out too. I That's why y'all just need some kind of know. negative energy. Well, I think the I'm not a heat fan. <laughs> the I heat out the playoffs. Fun. The Lakers out the playoffs. Y'all, y'all full of it, but it's cool because it's karma. It's karma. Cool. So you're, right reaching, you're, oh, reaching, you're reaching way more than somebody who plays bad defense. You're reaching, sir. Yeah. So again, reaching. exactly. Again, my team. I knew my team was going home. That was the Grizzlies. Scout, scout. <laughs> you said reaching more than somebody playing bad defense. Tell them why that clip of James Harden when he was doing that camp when he was just reaching out. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's, two right. That's two. All right. Okay. All right. Lastly, uh, the second semifinals matchup out west. Uh, we have the Denver Nuggets coming off a convincing series win over the Portland Trailblazers in six, matching up against the Phoenix Suns, who uh also took care of the Los Angeles Lakers in six games. Uh, same border, same questions, predictions, takes. Go ahead. And um, the guard position is won by the Suns. The big position is won by the Nuggets. The bench, oh, God. I Give me, this is what's going to happen. This is going to, give me the Nuggets. Give me the Nuggets and the MVP. Give me the Nuggets and six. Man, this is a tough one, man, because I didn't expect this from the Nuggets. Monty Morris. Is Will Barton coming back? <laughs> or P.J. Dozier? I Free close that. junior. Barton is supposed to come back, but at this point, I don't yeah. even – you I ain't giving give minutes at this point. This is crazy, man. This is tough, man. I, how healthy is CP3? Is he? Give me, give me the, give me the Nuggets, man. In seven, it's going seven. Give me the Nuggets. Give me the MVP of the season. Get it back to the Western Conference Finals in Jokic. 
I ain't still. Pretty sure I'm gonna be on my lonely own island again, but you know, used to that shit. So, but you love the Yeah, give me yeah. signs and seven. Give me signs and seven. They they beat the they they beat the defending champions for a reason. I told y'all they was gonna win. <laughs> what did they did? So give me the signs. Uh, y'all know how I feel about the Nuggets. First and foremost, Jokic, that guy, MVP. Crazy season, great season. Love watching the Nuggets play. But when we're talking about the Suns, a hungry team, a, a team that's led by Chris Paul, Devin Booker showing why I, I had him, you know, winning MVP into this season, but that's neither here or there. The Suns are a complete team, and I got them winning winning in seven. Like, Jokic is doing his thing. It's going to be a very fun series. Nuggets win, cool, but I, I'm, I'm going to roll with the Suns on this just, just because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the only person to pick the Suns. And they did beat the Lakers, so they feeling themselves. So it is what it is. And you live in Phoenix. Don't forget that. The city win, I win. The city going to be turned on if you turn regardless. So, hey, you know, right. hey. I'm going to leave the Lakers out of it because the Lakers have nothing to do with this conversation. I'm actually – I just don't know. I don't trust the health of CP3. I don't trust the health of CP3. I think the only reason – to be completely honest with you, I think the only reason that the, the, the Suns won that series is because AD was hurt. It's the only reason that they won that series, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going Denver in seven. To Sharpie's point, Monte Morris, Jesus Christ, where'd that man come from? Michael Porter Jr., Jesus Christ. What game was that? Was that game six? He no just went off. And I think that trend will continue, especially if CP3 is hurt. Give me the nuggets. Yeah. The nuggets didn't have an answer for Dame. They're not going to have an answer for Devin Booker. But the result's going to be the same. Give me the nuggets and six. Um, nuggets and six. So. So from teams that are now still in the playoffs uh, contending for a potential championship to two teams that are recently eliminated and are now looking for more coaching. So I will pass that over to my man, Took. Gee, thanks. At least somebody being nice to me on this podcast. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I, was, I was with you on Brooklyn, man. <laughs> Shit. Gee, thanks, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> As my alien brother said, man, uh, one of the teams that that uh, the reason uh, the title for mutual ways, for lack of better words, right, is that Brad Stevens was relieved of his job, but still was able to allow us to relive a good Curtis Jackson 50 cent moment by saying we're going to win a better or we're going to die trying to do that because he got promoted on his day off, y'all. He got promoted on his day off, but he got fired from his position. Mutual ways, I guess he said, hey, we're going to fire you, but we're going to turn you up. That's neither here or there. Um, so let me ask y'all this. The coaching had, uh, had the, the, the coaching search has started. The DVA LBR. Man, don't call me Dylan Brooks. Man, whatever. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he looked like uh, it. He was man, not originally good at his man. job, and he probably will be good at his job. Is that what they mean, Savage? Or, or or how about I I'd rather be the Trey Young or the or, or the pod? You just saying he's the villain. Hey, Trey, call me Trey Young then. <laughs> call me Trey. Young. But now the coaching searches are. Uh, I guess we'll we'll wait to say who we think we're gonna coach. But my thing is, man, at one point Danny Ainge looked like a basketball wizard, like he was that guy, and then everything fell apart. So I honestly just want to get y'all opinion of. What do y'all think, or why do y'all think the Celtics experiment uh, went down? Um, we can we can keep the same order. Um, I think the the Celtics experiment went bad because they they were okay. So you asked me a question why I think it went bad. The Celtics and the Heat were the two teams that made the playoffs in the East this year that did nothing during the offseason. The Celtics did nothing to enhance their lineup. The Heat did nothing to enhance their lineup. The Nets got better. The 76ers got healthier. The Bucks got better. Like the Hawks traded everything they needed to put around Trey Young. The Knicks even got a coaching change. So the Celtics said, oh, we're just going to play these guys are back again. And we're going to like, you know, make the finals. No, you're not. No, you're not. So that's why I went back. If you ask me, you can't 
keep hoping that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are going to carry this team by themselves and mark is smart and, and not put people around them to make them better. Brad Stevens is a great coach, but he does well with the personnel that he's given. That's why. So there could have been a lot better trades. We can go all the way back to they could have traded for AD back in the day. And they didn't. But uh, to me, I think the move came because they got embarrassed and they didn't do anything in the offseason to make sure they didn't get embarrassed this season. Spoke my exact sentiments, man. I'm making moves. Uh, stand pat. Hey, we got to the East Conference Finals for two of the last three years. We're good. We're fine, right? KD's coming back from injury, right? You know, Kevin Durant is arguably the best, second best player in the league coming back from injury from Brooklyn. Uh, who you said? Philly. They made some trades and finally got some shooters. And Doc Rivers. Hey, we, we, cannot like, we cannot like Doc Rivers all we want, but he's going to get you to the number one. He's going to get you to the top C into the playoffs. Uh, who else, like you said, who else made the move? Milwaukee, Trey, with you holiday. Like, those teams made the moves. Boston and, like I said, Miami. We, we're not going to go deeper down to Miami on this episode. But Boston, <clears throat> you stayed there the same team. You let Gordon Hayward. We laughed about Gordon Hayward his injuries. He was important to him last year. He left. You didn't replace him. Then Daniel Tice. He, was he the best center? No. You replaced him with Tristan Thompson, though. Like, you didn't. You didn't replace the players you did lose. You you didn't do anything. And just over the past couple of years, pump faking. You had you pump faking the Paul George deal. Uh, players not wanting to come. Anthony Davis' dad came out and said he's not on their point. Good point. Stuff Good like point. that. So stuff like that got in the way as well, dude. That racist crowd and stuff. But you just pump faking on deals. You kept on to you held on to your assets a little too long, which we're hoping the Grizzlies don't in the future. But we get to that, you know, in the future. So Grizzlies, look at the Celtics. Don't don't make the same mistake. How you trap? Yeah, just the echo everyone's sentiments is just Danny Ainge got cute for the most part. Uh refusing to making the necessary moves they needed to improve his roster on top of the East getting better all around. Uh ultimately led to this demise. Um now personally, I felt that he should have had to make the choice between Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And it seemed that it was they were leaning more towards Jason Tatum. And I'm like, okay. At this point, see what you can get for Jalen Brown and try to improve your roster if Jason Tatum is going to be your guy. But then Jalen Brown got the bag, and now you got both of these guys here locked in for some time. And then even with that, you still don't do anything to improve your roster. I mean, you gave up little to nothing for Evan Fournier, who, let's be real, wasn't moving the needle much for you. Tristan Thompson wasn't moving the needle much for you. So, And then, of course – Marcus Smart was in trade rumors as well. You could have probably got something from Marcus Smart. You didn't pull the trigger on that. So Danny Ainge getting cute, holding on to all his assets on top of everyone else in the East getting better is why you're in this situation here today. And I this is probably the second time I've heard of someone actually getting fired and actually moving up per se. So, but that's just me. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I think I'll go a different round because I think I totally agree with everything that y'all said, you know, him pump banking. What, speaking, you know, to Danny Ainge, you know, I think there were times he he had trades there. He had the SS, you know, to make certain trades and he didn't. I think that was part of the issue um, I, to be to be 100 about it. Kimball Walker, you know, is part of the issue that that trade didn't work out well. This random trade for Evan Fournier, I'm not sure what that was supposed to do with the Boston Celtics that, you know, that sucked them not having an answer at the center position to be honest with you, i think they could have played robert williams a little bit more um but you know you know the the, the Tristan Thompson one that i'm not sure what the hell that trade was so i think you know to go to go a different way, i think injuries part of, uh, played a part of that um because you know and then plus they also got hit with COVID too so jason tatum got hit with COVID. then Jalen brown went down toward the end of the season marcus smart was hurt you know throughout different times of the season kimber walker couldn't stay healthy and clearly he won't be able to stay healthy. So you got to figure out, you know, how you'll be able to somehow move off that because he ain't just making no chump change. And he, you know, what he's showed you over the past, you know, how long has he been there? A year or two? Two years? Once a team or a player shows you who they are, believe him. So you somehow, I think somehow, some point, somehow, somewhere, you got to come off Kimball Walker because he ain't the answer. He can't stay healthy. Um, and then you got to figure out, you know, what you're going to do with that big man position too. So 
good look. I, and I don't think, you know, it's a matter of, you know, Brad Stevens not being able to coach. I think he's a good coach because if, if he wasn't a good coach, he wouldn't have gotten you to the, to, you know, to the conference finals as many times as he did in short, in such a short window. Um, so I think, I think that's the, I think that's the reason. And I do uh, go back off of the Kimball point. <laughs> yeah. Kimball, that didn't work. That sign, that didn't work. But a lot of what you take from that is, I guess, when Kyrie, the whole Kyrie deal kind of messed them up. When they, they I guess they felt the whole situation. Kyrie not liking it there, whatever happened. When C left, Kim Walker was the best play, able player to replace him. So it kind of was like a stuck situation. Or you could have just put a little bit of money in and, and kept Terry, uh, Terry, Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier. Yeah, that's yeah. That's I was good. just about hey, to say that. Terry. Because, yeah, good one. <laughs> because Terry Rozier <laughs> – is not a defensive liability like Kimba Walker. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so, like, yes, I agree. You should have kept Kimba. I mean, kept Kimba in Charlotte, but kept Terry with Boston, to be honest, as a um, GM of the team. Because, again, yes, I get it. Kimba can hit a shot, you know, when he can, whatever. But Terry Rozier, during that time when the Celtics were, like, really bad, realistically, not having their full lineup, he was a great part of that team at the point guard position. So, yeah, you should have paid a few more dollars um, for Terry Rozier. And look what he's doing now uh, with Charlotte, even though they didn't, you know, quite make it and blossom there. But he's still having some great year. What? So what? Was it just that Terry Rozier got mad because the whole Kyrie thing went? Because, you know, he was playing a lot. Then when Kyrie came back, he wasn't playing that much. Because he got he, – he didn't get that much money. Well, he got money. But, I mean, compared to what they paid him Walker, he didn't get nowhere near it. I mean, they, they – Charlotte paid him more than what Boston was going to offer oh. So, so yes, and, 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 and as you as you yeah. were saying, like I think it was the second. I think it was the year Kyrie was down and he played well. You know, without mm-hmm. him, if I'm right. Terry Rozier too, like like hey, you see, you saw what I've done in the playoffs without your our quote unquote uh, superstar. Mm-hmm. Like, give me the bag. And when Boston was like, eh, this is how much we can give you because we still have Kyrie, it was like, all right, I'm out. So. <laughs> Very good points. Good points. Good points, y'all. Um, and ready to bring up that Terry Rose here because I think that's really when the the, the decline really no, the decline really started when when it went down. I mean, when it did out, like when they did uh, Isaiah Thomas wrong. I think that was kind of like we we saw like the decline going because we saw how they treated their players. You know, the the heartbeat of the team is disrespected. You know, with it and then. You know, when when Kyrie goes out, Terry Rozier becomes a heartbeat of the team, and they you know did they let him go. Um, so definitely moving forward, the roster shape up is one to definitely keep an eye on in, in Boston, especially with somebody, you know, calling the shots now. Uh, I guess a basketball head, as they call Brad Stevens, for lack of better words. I mean, so we'll see, you know, we'll see. But on to the next, um, Portland. You know, Portland has also relieved their coach of their duties. Um, this is the only coach that Dame Lillard has played for. And according to reports, of course, he will have a big impact on who they bring in. But my question to y'all is, will it even matter? You know, how long do y'all really see Dame Lillard staying in Portland? Um, Of course, this is his team. Uh, This is his city. The fans love him. But I think we're going to get to a point where we're going to see a Russell Westbrook kind of impact is where the the Thunder traded Russell just because they felt like he can win a ring or do better elsewhere. They're doing him a favor. And I think we're going to see the same thing in Portland. But I could be wrong. How do you guys feel? Do y'all feel like even though Dane will have an impact in bringing in the coach, he'll, you know, it'll it'll be a factor, or he will be a factor going forward? Ooh, we you still got me starting this one off. I love that. Um, I'll state this, man. I this is how I feel about Damian Lillard. I hope Damian Lillard stays a Blazer for his entire life. I I really hope he does. Now I say that to say this. We just named some teams in the East that all did some lineup changes. And to me, the what the Hawks did to surround Trey Young with what he needed is long overdue for what the Blazers need to do for Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard to me has, um, and I've talked to off air with Skyler about this, Damian Lillard has done and said that he wants to be a Blazer forever. And let him be that. But if you think, Portland, that this lineup that y'all got that has been to the playoffs five straight times, been exited and excused out four of those five times, and the other time was a sweep, it was to the Warriors, I give you that, but it was a sweep, 
you have to do something different. The, Dame and CJ is not working. Dame and all those players ain't working. So to me, it's bring in a new coach, do some roster changes, but keep Dame in Portland. Because if you let Dame leave Portland, I'm not sure what you're going to get. I don't know who's going to take on that $40 million plus a season that that man is commanding. And is he worth it? I mean, look at what he's doing. But who's willing to take on $40 million plus a season? And that's going to grow exponentially, expeditiously after this season, I believe, as well. So to me, do exactly what the Hawks did. Get some more shooters. Get some other players that are not looking to always score all the time. Um, and keep Dame in Portland. I know about a good 20 teams that happily take on that 40 million dang contract. I was trying about to say, uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but um, so, you know, Dames always said, I want to stay in Portland. Mike Conley always said he wants to stay in Memphis. Russ always said they want to stay, he wants to stay in OKC. Back to what two said earlier, I don't think they're going to do this offseason. Uh, because they made basically they say are oh, terrible starts, you're fired. They can say mutually parted ways the name of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, they can miss me with that one. Um, but yeah, he got fired. Boom. So you want to basically they're gonna try and place the coach. What they have to do this offseason, because I know they're probably not gonna try and they probably not gonna jank, they probably not gonna trade him unless he demands a trade. And I don't see him doing it. Similar to Mike Conn and Russell Westbrook, they didn't, but eventually the team did right by him. I don't think he's going to demand it, but he did have them Instagram messages and those lyrics. This is the first time I saw him kind of teeter away from saying, oh, I want to stay important. This is the first time I've seen him. So it's a little chink in armor. And Lakers could use a point guard for, you know, this last bit of LeBron's time and AD's time for that factor with his injury history. But I do think they definitely have to trade CJ McCollum. That's like a no doubt. They have to. He has to go. I don't know where. They, they should have been trading him for pieces. Because their, de- their backcourt, their defense in their backcourt is like the worst defense. They great offensive backcourt defense is <laughs> worst <laughs> behavior. You know what I'm saying? He got to go. Um, they got they got to make that move this offseason, definitely. Uh, I've been saying this for two years now right. for the Portland Trailblazers. I said you're going to have to choose either Dame or CJ, and you better choose right. At this point now, you got to see what you can get for C.J. McCollum because this backcourt of him and C.J. is just not working. It's it's not clicking. For some reason, we're not sure as to why. Uh, Terry Stotts, who's been at Portland for God knows how long, who actually is not a bad coach. It's just the roster is just wasn't it wasn't right. clicking like it was supposed to click. But in addition to Choosing between Dame and CJ, you got to address this front court, man. Like, you honestly got to get some, some, something in the front court because Nurkish is only good for God knows maybe a couple of games. Zach Collins has been in and out of the lineup, he's been injured. And his cancer can't play defense. I can no, tell you that right now. Ain't no he him out. 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 <laughs> okay, well, he's been consistently out of the lineup. <laughs> I was trying to give him some leeway by saying in and out of the lineup, but let's be real. Zach Collins <laughs> hasn't been in the lineup since they got him. Uh, Ennis Cantor can't play defense. Let's just be real. You put him in a pick and roll situation, he's like a deer in headlights. Trust me, I know he was in Oklahoma City, so I know. So you you got to see you got to address this front court on top of figuring out what you're going to do with Dame and CJ. There's rumors that Dame wants Jason Kidd to coach the Trailblazers. Um for uh this upcoming season and going forward but i'm not sure at this point man like you gotta do something with this roster he's already withdrawn his yeah. game that's kid said no jason kid said no okay yeah. well the got the doing, doing this podcast got the uh the notification <laughs> 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 yeah so at this point like y'all this front office gotta do something with this roster man so pretty sure cj cj mccullum will be in a lot of trade talks this offseason and the Grizzlies better not be in there on one of them. The problem with the problem with the Portland Trailblazers is it was not Terry. It was part of Terry Stotts. Um, but their problem was their inability to play defense. At the end of the day, when you walk out of that timeout and you cannot comfortably say, we need to get a stop or two to win a game, the Blazers can't do that. 
And to be completely honest with you, it, that's a CJ McCullough problem. That's a backcourt problem. That's a Nurkic problem. It's also a Dame problem, too, because Dame mm-hmm. ain't stopping nobody either. Mm-hmm. So just as good as, you know, Dame and CJ are getting you to the sixth seed, that's their ceiling because they aren't playing defense. They that I'm sorry to tell you, but that that series against the Nuggets proved everything. Proved everything. Monte Morris, I'm sorry. I, this is no knock against Monte Morris. But there there were about two or three times he went for 20, 25 plus. No. Way too many times. They, they couldn't guard Michael Porter Jr. to save their life. That was their issue. They cannot play defense. They have to figure out what they're going to do as far as, you know, who are they going to keep and who are they going to trade? I think, you know, because, you know, Dame has, you know, he's proven his loyalty. He said that he wants to be in Portland. You do whatever, you know, you do whatever you can to keep him there, which I think contractually he's going to be there. But you got, I think you got to come off CJ because that backcourt is too small. They can give you, you know, combined, they can give you 50, 55 points a game, but they probably going to turn around and give up 60, 65 on the other end. That's the problem. Nurkic is not playing defense either because, good Lord, Jokic worked him every time. Every time. And he wanted the ball, and Nurkic was worked every single time. So they their inability to play defense you, is their issue. And, and just you, because, and because, of, because of the roster, they haven't gotten better. Denver's gotten better. Utah's gotten better. Golden State will be there. You know, when they get healthy, you can make a case that the Memphis Grizzlies at times can be better than the Portland Trailblazers. That's an issue. That's an issue. Man, you see, you see why Denver parted ways with Nurkic because at one point yep. Jokic and Nurkic were teammates mm-hmm. in Denver. Yep. Nurkic was starting over him. He got hurt. Yep. Jokic came in and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> and Can Nurkic be hurt him. Jokic and Dame on the same team. Oh my god! Hey, oh, so that's why I want to break up. I just looked at some stats. Denver started. Be mindful. Monte Morris came off the bench. Exactly. Come on. He should have probably still been starting, but they started Composo, I guess, because his toughness and all that. Austin Rivers, who wasn't even oh. on the par of a team, misses oh, well, starting. And why do you this team, these folks average a combined, let me see, 6.1 for 7.3, 13 points combined in their backcourt, and they just lost to that team in six games. And the game, game had on, 55 hold on, hold on. points on, on like 90% shooting. They lost because they gave up 147 points. That's terrible. That's terrible, bro. Yeah, that was a that was a video game game right there. I have never seen nothing like that since um, McGrady put thirty three and thirty five. Like, what was the game? game? What was the game five? Dame, Jesus Christ! Christ. 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 To save his life, I think he put up fourteen points in the in the two overtimes. I think he probably missed a shot. But guess what? Nobody else was helping him, especially on the defensive end. They could not. Get a stop. That's their problem. There will continue to be their problem until they break that team up. And also, they shouldn't have traded Gary Trent Jr. If you ask me, yeah. facts. They should have kept him. Facts, because he pile. he getting buckets <laughs> right now in uh, Toronto, even though they ain't do much. But yeah, facts. But that, that's all for well, so far of the coaching firings. Uh, great, great segment, guys. Uh, great job. All right, let's 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 move on. Those, those, those are the important ones. Let's let's let's, oh, let's yeah. figure it out. Those oh, Steve Clifford got uh, Steve Clifford uh, got fired, got fired, got fired away. from the uh Orlando Magic. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Nah. Rebuild. To, well, I know we don't like that word, but rebuild, whatever. We ain't about to break up your boy, uh our Rashard Phillips, who uh had the little point guard things, happy regards mm-hmm. and stuff. He mm-hmm. made art talk about Penny. Uh, move move, move along. along. Move, move yeah, along. nah, he, he's smoking a good one on that one. He's smoking a real good one. <laughs> All right, real talk. Got you. Um, man, I know there's more I want to talk about that segment. But anyways, um, do want to talk about, we started this conversation really on our other uh, cast was starting five, but just thinking about now that we are letting more fans into the stadiums and to the arenas, how this is affecting and fans versus players, right? The throwing of popcorn, the spitting uh, on players, the disrespect towards another family member, um, a team, well, the team's family member. How do you all feel about this, um, you know, in the NBA and just maybe even in sport events in general? But let's start with the NBA and then maybe branch ourselves out. And again, and no, nope, we're not gonna keep the same order, go reverse order. Start with Skyler, then Trevor, then Toot, then Sharky. No, I, I, I'll say the same thing I said on Starter Five. I just think it's extremely unfortunate that, you know, as 
you know, as much time we spent away as fans being able to go to sporting events. And now that we are finally able to do that at a really decent capacity, because, you know, New York and, you know, all the Phoenix, everybody clearly don't even care about, you know, the, even the, the lingering effects of COVID. So nobody's, you know, social distancing anymore. But, you know, as much time as we've spent away as fans being able to, you know, attend some of these sporting events. And now you have people throwing bottles at players, you know, spitting at people. Like, I just think it's it's crazy. And like what type of to be honest, like what type of human do you have to be, you know, to, you know, do that, do those different things to players like as a fan, you should, you know, that's not I, I'll go there if you want me to, Shitty. Um, but, you know. I, I, I just think it's, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, that players, that that fans are doing this. As a fan, I think you should, you know, be able to, you know, you can get a little loose, you know, you say you can bark at, you know, players here and there, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you go to the extreme of, you know, trying to spit on players, you know, talking, you know, or making racial, you know, slurs to, you know, basketball, you know, to players' parents and things like that, like that, that's totally out of line. And at some point, you know, it's, unless you want another malice in the palace, at some point, you know, there's going to have to be, you know, you know, there's going to be things that, you know, the NBA has to put in place, you know, to hold these, you know, these fans accountable. Because there's going to be another incident uh, unless things change where, you know, players want to be like, all right, you know what, I ain't built like that. I ain't built to, you know, just turn the other cheek. I'm finna go and, you know, I'm finna go, you know, defend myself. I'm going to go, you know, defend my, my father who's, you know, being, you know, who's who's having, you know, racial things said to him. So at some point, the NBA has to do something. And I'm saying, you know, you got to throw people in jail for, you know, a year or two years, but you you got to make an example out of somebody. You got to make somebody scared. And to Shitty's point, you know, it's it's interesting that, you know, it's it's people of another color doing things like this to, you know, players of color. I'll say that, but I'll let y'all have it. It's funny that you, everyone's talking about mouths at the palace, but that is exactly what it's going to take before something actually gets done. Seriously. Um, I'll echo my um, remarks from the start of five as well. I think it's, it's basically money. Like these fans quote unquote play great money to go to these events and they feel that they're entitled to do whatever they want because they spent money to attend these events. So, Hey, that plus a little of the uh, liquid courage as everyone uh, lose to. Um, <laughs> yeah, quote unquote liquid courage. You know, it's a recipe for disaster. Um, whether it's throwing popcorn on players, whether it's spitting on players, uh, making racial remarks about players. Of course, it's all men of a particular uh, race that will go unnamed on this podcast right now. But again, if something is really going to be done, it's going to take another malice at the palace, honestly. And I'm, honestly, I'm all for it. And I nominate Russell Westbrook to be the first one to actually go and swing on somebody because he's been dealing with this practically every way he's, he's been. He dealt with it in the bubble. He dealt with it in Utah. And then, of course, you had the incident in Philly. So if, if it's going to take another malice at the palace for something to finally get done for these fans, and if it takes fans doing some jail time for it, and so be it. Right. And we, we let's just let's just keep it keep keep a spade a spade, man. Um, and no way are we bashing the white community, but if you look at literally every single time that a fan interacted wrong with a player, it's a white, it's a white fan interacting with a black player. So I've gotten to the point when I I just straight up call them the evils. You know what I'm saying? The evil, evil white people that are trying to take over the world to just be mean to somebody. But I think at the end of the day, Trev, you hit it right on the head. It's all about money. Um, but I'm going to take it a step further and say that it's honestly just for recognition purposes at this point. Um, I think people will look at social media and and, and see, you know, the, these moments going viral. And in a sense, you know, they've been quarantined for a year. People hadn't you know, pay more attention to them. So they need these moments of of, of just, hey, I'm here, you know, of being recognized of, of attention. And I think that once the Malice in the Palace part two comes, I think that's when the NBA will take these, these I don't even say threats, but these actions more serious um, because it, it, can, it can get a lot worse, you know, with, with 100% of capacity being lifted for some stadiums, uh, some fields, you got, you know, a bunch of evils coming that are paying this money to feel like that they can act and do and say whatever the hell they want because they paid a certain amount for a ticket when it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like John Moran's parents shouldn't be in Utah and telling, you know, hearing that, hey, I put a nickel in your back, you know, you start dancing or, 
you know, calling calling his mom a B word. You know, salute to the fans that the the, the good whites that that are able that bought the the beers for Josh's family that that you know provided him with some kind of safety. His family with some kind of safety. But then again, you know, you got those bad you know those bad apples in a bunch. The evils that are going to do them regardless. So I think until, you know, the NBA really put their foot down on somebody next, it's going to take a player to put their foot up to somebody's ass in order for them, you know, to, again, take this threat serious. Yeah, so. I honestly feel, <laughs> and I'll let, and I'll let um, I think, Sharky go. I mm-hmm. honestly feel that if another malice happens, I think the NBA shouldn't even suspend him. Like, just hit him with a fine and let's just keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really passion, man. It, it's some people, like I said, people been quarantined for literally a year. That's literally been by themselves a year that ain't talked to family, that ain't talked to people. I think it's, it's with the psychology of people at this point. So if I can get, you know, if I can get to an NBA game and get some kind of 15 seconds of fame, I'm cool. Thank you. That's just the society I believe that we live in. There's better ways to get that though. Agree, 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 agree. There's literally better ways to get that. Like okay. you can like ask for an autograph and get a player's attention. You could that could happen. You could check somebody. Like we all Memphians here. You can check somebody and go viral. Like is there's ways around it. Like you don't literally have to. <laughs> you don't literally have to uh throw popcorn on somebody on spit on somebody. They're doing it because they feel that they're entitled to do it. And second, the guy that they're doing it to knows that they have to show restraint because if they act out on it, they could possibly lose their job. And then you'll have an incident with the guy that sued the NBA and the Utah Jazz over the uh, Russell Westbrook uh, incident. So, again. They lost, by the way, though. Yeah. They lost. Yeah, I know. That was funny as hell. It was funny. (laughs) So, but, yeah, that's, that's all with me, man, so. Yeah, I think unfortunately it's gonna take another malice at the palace. I mean, just for the fact that you really can't do. I mean, like you said, you can't throw them in jail for a year. Um, you can they ban them from the arenas. I mean, ban them from the arena period. Concerts and these fans can't come back to the arenas for anything. And like you said, it kind of sucks because kind of like the same thing. Police officers like you see the ones who are doing the killing, but overall it's the group. It, you know, it's one bad apple sports the bunch. But it's kind of like you know, kind of like the same thing with fans. Like you said, Utah like. It was three fans that were being racist, but you had the other white fans around the family who called security, who was helping John, I mean, John's dad and all else. So it's like everybody, it's not everyone, but it's going to always be that one bad apple. And like I said, throwing, you can go in jail for one night, like the dude in Boston. I think he went jail one, two nights or whatever. But like throwing them, they can get you. I think he got charged uh, for throwing a weapon. It was a water yeah, bottle. Yeah, he got Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it probably takes something like that. I mean, he threw a water bottle. Yeah, it was a weapon charge, but hey, you can't act out in sports. What have been doing? Uh, folks try to take up talking about Kyrie just the logo. He didn't even stomp. He went over there. He stepped on the logo and walked away. I ain't trying to stop it. <laughs> Please. Hold on. I saw this on Twitter. Hold on, that's a whole yeah. other topic, bro. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. I got to I got to say this. I got to say this because I saw this on Twitter, <laughs> and this is everybody's moment in here, and I'm pretty sure they about to, they about to recognize this. If you don't want it to be stepped on, why is it on the floor? Hey, ain't got to say nothing. <laughs> but yeah, I think if you didn't want it to be stepped on, it wouldn't have been on the floor. It's just right. It. But I, I, unfortunately, it's going to take another Malice of the Palace. And to Trevor's point, during the first Malice of the Palace, I thought Ron Tisha had been suspended the rest of the year. That's why I did not like I did not like David Stern for that reason. I couldn't stand David Stern after that whole ordeal. I was like. I watched him get a cup of beer thrown on his head. He and they changed the camera. Down. He was it laying down. Him. And the camera chain ain't gonna change. I was like, did he just get hit? Then they say, yeah. no, Ron says his stance. I like I knew it. I'm like, bro, like what what are you supposed to do? <laughs> like <laughs> that's that's just natural reaction. David Stern is in that position, he would get that rest in peace to David Stern. But I think Adam Silver would understand them or he went. The player had to get some type of they, they will get in trouble. There won't be a no game suspension, but it shouldn't be no 25, 50 whole season suspension yeah, if that does that, come that, to that point. That, that ruined the Pacers season because they legit had a shot at possibly contending for a championship. Yeah. Like, real talk. <laughs> they was <wasn't laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's facts though. That's especially facts. in Boston. 
What up? Yeah. We talked about it earlier in the beginning, my guy. Talk about it earlier. Shout out to the Titans. Mm-hmm. Getting Julio. I got Chris, uh, man. Uh, what happened to the about, COVID dogs? Who? Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. So <laughs> moving along. <laughs> yeah. So to wrap up this segment, everyone remembers Malice in the Palace. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, and they're not because James Johnson don't care. He really don't. <laughs> hey, care. Black belt, that's so a, yeah. that's an end word for real. But yeah. like, legitimately, we all remember Mouse in the Palace. If you in, it wasn't just Sports Center that broadcast about Mouse in the Palace. This was on the local news all across the the country. But my issue that I have with this whole pro- thing is why why do we not know who actually did these things? Why is their name not being broadcast? Why are their pictures not being out? But the moment that Jermaine O'Neal, Ron Artest went to the stands and their name, their pictures are right there. These are the guys that did it. But we don't have the same thing. And we know why. You don't need to tell me why. You don't. It, it's legitimately a difference of skin. It's what it is. But we're not going to broadcast that this person, oh, he can't come back to a game. So what? It needs to be more than just a charge because the charge needs to make sure he's not working anymore. Those guys were not working during that time, right? My, may, I mean, they could provide for their families, but legitimately, you make a mistake, you need to own up and pay for it. Um, and so I'll, I'll leave it with that, and I'll pass it over to Skyler uh, so we can talk about some tennis. Well, not really tennis, but Naomi, I should say. Yeah, so definitely want to um, make sure we, we talk about Naomi in our, in our Real Talk segment. So uh, again, for those who aren't aware of the story, Naomi Osaka uh, withdrew from the French Open, which is uh, one of the four big grand slams in the sport of tennis. Uh, she withdrew uh, Monday to, quote unquote, take some time away from the court. Um, and this was shortly after she was fined and, you know, talked bad about, she was threatened, she, um, you know, she was given really, um, even more, um, harsher sanctions for skipping a, uh, a mandatory media obligations. And so she's talked about, you know, she's dealt with um, depression since I think it was about 2018 when she, when she won a big grand slam. Um, so definitely want to get you guys' opinions and thoughts on, you know, you know, players, you know, of course they're, op- they're contractually obligated to you know talk about or they're uh, they're contractually obligated to talk um to the media after you know after a, a match or a game or something like that but definitely want to get you guys thoughts about you know players and um you know them having to deal with depression if you have to deal with depression or or things like that so um well, actually let's go to um sharky trevor shitty and then i'll go last switch it up just a little bit Definitely want mine going first. Um, I think with Naomi, shout out to the queen, uh, first of all, for handling her mental health and prioritizing her mental health. Um, and with that, I, you know, of, of the report of the Calm app, who if y'all don't know the Calm app, it helps with meditation, it helps with breathing. So if y'all would like to get to, you know, getting your depression and anxiety underway, definitely download the Calm app because it will help. But what they're doing is also they paid the fine for Naomi and any other uh, tennis player who would not want to talk to the media. And I think that that's very key and that's very important because, you know, not to bring up, you know, Kyrie again, but what he's doing with saying, I, you know, this it, we're just playing ball. We're just playing a sport. We shouldn't have to really submit ourselves to, you know, being degraded or, you know, submitted to y'all opinions or just you know, putting ourselves in a negative space that we don't have to be in. You know, we're just playing a sport that we love. And with Naomi, you know, re- withdraw her name for mental health purposes, like, you know, we still got to think, you know, COVID is still going on and it's affected people way different than other people. Like you have people like myself who, you know, has his own thoughts about COVID, but you have people like, you know, Naomi who, you know, may have been affected negatively mentally and still trying to get her, you know, herself back there physically. So I think that, you know, this is a huge first step, you know, with, you know, thank God for calm. I think this is just the beginning of them. Um, But we are beginning as a people, as a black people, we are beginning to prioritize our mental health, which is very, very important because I don't think that, you know, the Queen Serena and Venus would have been able to get away with this, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So it just shows the progression of, you know, our people saying, hold on, like, if I if I don't feel not not that not that it's being lazy or whatever, but if I'm not feeling to it, you know, to a mental aspect, then physically, why put myself in that situation? So salute to Naomi 
Uh, she'll be back, I guess, with it. I'm not, you know, much of a tennis person, but I guess whenever the next major event is, she'll be competing. And I'm pretty sure she'll win it. So, again, salute to that queen. Yep. Shout out to Naomi, man. Uh, Got to take, I mean, I think she depreciates this all the time for just us um, as, you know, the regular people. Like, take those blanks, take those PTOs for mental breaks. I've done it this year. I mean, like, I've just taken, use my PTO just like, all right, I need a break. Just take a day. Take a day off, man. Meditate. And same thing goes for athletes. They're always on this platform. They always got to talk to them. I, I know it's hard. I know they're getting paid millions of dollars, right? And you get the people in the comments on Twitter talking about, hey, no, nah, they're getting paid. Play. They need to play. But, I mean, you have to, you got so much have obligations. You're traveling uh, everywhere. You are got to play. You got to stay on top of your game. You're talking to the media after every game. Every game. They kind of got access to the locker room. Like, it. That that's a lot, man. Mentally, like mentally, and I like how it started, kind of like with Demar Derozan and Kevin Love a couple years ago when they spoke out, and people got mad at them for it. But I was like, they were speaking the truth. Like they're still human beings. They're not just same thing. Like we were talking about the fans and the whole thing. They're like treating them like animals. And in this case, you just treat them like a hey, they're robots. And Kawhi Leonard probably is one, but the rest of them, they're not. You know, they're actually real people. Like, <laughs> so we had to take it at face value. So I'm, shout out to Naomi, shout out to Kawhi early. I mean, not Kawhi, uh, Kyrie early this year for the same thing, taking a couple weeks off. Like, hey, especially everything going on with, especially Kyrie during that time with the whole, you know, the killings and, the, you know, everything's going on like that. Like, they, they need they need time out too. So, like, respect it. Two things with me. Uh, first and foremost, I do want to just commend uh, Naomi Osaka for um, taking the step that she did take and choosing herself and her overall health because mental health is part of your overall health for those that don't know out there. And then uh, also I'll just look into it like this, and I hate the flack that she got for it, but it's like this with society now. It's like mental health is an issue until it is the issue. Um and it's like every time someone of this stature chooses their mental health or chooses to choose their mental health for their overall well-being, for some reason we're being flack for it. But yeah, we have all these avenues and things and preaching the importance of taking care of mental health. So again, to Sharky's point, man, these these athletes are human human beings just like us. They have to do what they have to do. They have to be on the top of their game every single night. They have to talk to the media every single night. Of course, it's obligated in their contract, which leads me to my next point. This is my challenge for the media. Like, if you understand this, and I'm pretty sure you do, like, yes, you have a job to do. I get that because you got to try to get some kind of story to write for whoever you're working for. But just be real with it. Like, stop trying to just get something for, quote, unquote, entertainment purposes or clicks or things of that nature. Like, you're there as part of the media to report to the people what's going on. And of course it's gotten to the point where now it's not about who's factual and who's right. Who's first is now about who's first and who's more entertaining more so than they're like, what kind of drama can we stir up here? Like what kind of drama is going on in the locker room and things of that nature. But again, uh, congrats and kudos to Naomi Osaka for choosing herself choosing mental health and choosing self-care in this situation, man. And I'm pretty sure she'll be back when she's ready and she's going to be on top of her game as always. Who? Yeah. Um, I'm always a fan of taking the, the day off um, mental health days or PTO pay time off um, goes for well-being as physically as well as mentally. Um, and so those are in unison when you're talking about taking the day off. The issue I have is that because people of color are choosing to use their PTO right now, and they are these sports figures, they are to his point making millions. Now it's a problem um, to Eminem said this, but now it's a problem in middle America. Now it's a travesty, right? Um, but legitimately, I'm sure other people were taking breaks as well, but they just went on the platform of a Naomi, of a Kyria, of uh, anyone else. And so to me, take the day, do what you got to do, take the whole tournament off, because what you're showing is your mental is more important than winning another championship. You're showing that your mental is bigger than this sport. You're showing that you yourself are bigger than what this sport is. And that's realistically what it should be about. And this 
should trickle down all the way down to even people that work, I don't know, at Burger King slash Tuna King. Um, it don't even matter, right? Um, so just make sure, yeah, I didn't forget. Just make sure that you take time for yourself because you cannot pour from an empty cup. To your point, GD, and I literally, because I, you know, I'm a tennis fan, of course, only around like the Grand Slam time, right? So I, I was watching tennis, you know, when the, when this news story broke about, you know, her taking time away uh, for mental health issues and things like that. So first of all, huge shout out to her for, you know, being able to, you know, mentally being strong enough to do that because this is a huge Grand Slam. The French Open is huge. Um, and it's definitely something, you know, every player definitely wants to, you know, take part in. And, you know, what I notice is, you know, the tennis world, you know, people that, you know, that that, that analyze, you know, that are pro experts at tennis, you know, they kind of gave her some slack about it. It's to her point, you know, that's why she's taking time away for mental health issues. Right. So early in the day, you know, Roger Federer, he decided he in a sense did the same thing. He withdraw for physical reasons. He, he you know, he took time away because, you know, his knee, I think I think it's his knee or something like that. But he's had, you know, two you know big surgeries or two big operations on his body within the past year. So, you know, as Naomi Osaka, you know, decided to withdraw for, you know, mental health reasons, Roger Federer, you know, he took time away or he literally in a sense quit because, you know, he he was dealing with physical issues, silence or not necessarily silence, but, you know, shout out to, you know, Roger Federer. Let's make sure, you know, you come back, you know, when when, when you're right and healthy. But that same energy, you know, wasn't reciprocated when, when Naomi Osaka did it. That's my issue. And to your point, to you know about you know the comm app, you know coming you know in in defense of players, you know they're going to pay those fines for you know when they don't want to speak to the media. Why, why isn't tennis? You know why aren't they coming back to you know to back her up and say okay, you know what, cool, you don't you know you don't want to talk to media, then that's fine. You know let us know what you need. You know um, you know maybe skip the next you know few sessions, whatever the case may be. And I, I know I'm pretty sure they don't want to do that, but still, I just wish. That the same energy that you know they that they gave for Roger Federer and they, again no no knock against him and you know I appreciate everything he's done for that sport do the same thing for Naomi Osaka who is probably you know probably the the biggest you know name in tennis right now outside of you know you know the few names that you have you know Serena and Fed and Djokovic like that they need to you know make sure that they come in defense of her because you know let's just say hypothetically speaking she didn't want to come back at all. If, if you're a tennis fan, if you're, you know, if you're an expert of tennis, that's going to hurt you. <laughs> so I just wish, you know, the same energy that they gave Roger Federer early in today and, and him withdrawing because of physical reasons. To your point, Shidi, give Naomi Osaka that same energy when she wants to take or anybody for that nature. Give give her that same energy. Show her love. You know, do whatever you need to do to make sure that she's OK um, for the long run. To, to so to have, kind of before we move on, man, I think it's because mental health, you know, taking care of our mental health is still new. You really mm -hmm. into society, but really in sports, really too. You know, the evils may look at this as a moment of, you know, some of them may say it, it may be lazy. You know what I'm saying? You 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 you're, you're taking our brand, you're taking our sport, and you're you know what I'm saying just saying you put yourself above the sport. You know what I'm saying? It's like how people feel that that Kyrie is putting himself above the game of basketball. When in actuality, these are the people that make the sport. These are the people that make your brand. And I'm with you that the, the uh, tennis association uh, they should be looking at um, at Osaka and saying what can we do to help. But I think because it's so new, we really uh, people don't know really how to help and you know how to present that aspect really to the fans as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think because it's a black woman, you know, in my opinion, Serena and Venus wouldn't 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 be able to get away with this ten years ago. You know, mm -hmm. not to the media, especially with the elevating height of women tennis. I don't think they'd be able to do it there. So in my opinion, they walk so Naomi can run. And I think Naomi's gonna about do the same thing for the next culture and the next, you know, women and men uh, uh, coming into the sport. Yeah, and, and I'll say this before we wrap up. Like, I think, you know, people have to understand that if mentally, if you aren't there, there's almost nothing that you can do to get out of it, right? Like, I mean, you know, for people that play sports, whatever the case may be, you know, athletes, well, I wouldn't say they're hurt a lot, but, they, you know, they play with injuries all the time, and we don't know about that. Mm -hmm. And mentally, if you're physically hurt, you can push yourself through that. But mentally, if you are not there, if you're not mentally, you know, focused in, laser, you know, laser focused in, there's almost nothing you can do about it. And the only way to, you know, for most people to get through that is just take time away mentally. So I just, you know, 
if people don't understand it as you know as as a general person or you know or for yourself when you mentally aren't there whether it be for work family whatever when they, when you aren't mentally there for whatever reason to, you know for, for you to be there when you mentally can't do it there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you can do with it but but take time away so i definitely hope that you know they do whatever they can to get to um I hope they do whatever they can to get her, um, you know, back in the right mental state. Great, 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 great. Real talk, man. Much needed ses session today. But after the design L of the month, let's give our L of the month for May. We didn't give it L of the month, but for the first time since we started this L of the month thing, we're going to do it, flip it around to a W. Let's be positive about it. Yeah, well, mainly because the L's, this W is because of the L's he gave out <laughs> to more than one person. We can choose one. There's plenty of plethora of people that got L's from Mr. We Don't Want to Smoke from you. And that's why Kwame Brown, w, you get it for me. You get our first W of the month winner, Kwame Brown. Congratulations. Hey, everybody. And the folks that got the L was everybody that got his mama's cooking. So let's, let's, let's keep it at that. Man. Yeah, Kwame Brown definitely gets the W of the month, the first one. So hey, it is what it is. Mm -mm. Any disputes? No. Oh no, there's none. <laughs> I had I had a man knock on my front door. <laughs> yes, man. Kwame, anytime you want to come on the podcast, man, free and free. Yes. Do some recruiting. Educate us if right. you can. Hey, educate us, man. Hey, we, we all here. We all welcome. So you had Joe, Judge Joe Brown on your podcast. I'm on the way. Not even his podcast. It's really his YouTube channel. He's been going live for I me. Mean, he didn't have a little bit of everybody on there now. So you know, hey, we down for it. Made, you, made yourself relevant again. Well, they made you relevant again. Stephen Jackson, Matt Barnes, and Gibbon Reed. Yeah. And you spoke and you out back with, with, the great, with the greatest of clapbacks <laughs> in the history of history. So yeah, it's, it's taking off, but. That's what does it for today, man. Anybody got anything else? Yeah, speaking of taking off, man, shout out to Rory and Maul. I don't know if y'all pay attention to the Joe Bunn podcast, but he's actually got some stuff coming up with KD. You know, I think that'll be a big push, especially when uh, KD is pushing his brand, you know, outside the game of basketball. So, like, for that, that's really important. But for two, like, serious questions, what the hell happened to the COVID dogs? Like, we ain't heard a word from them since. <laughs> ain't nobody going to Miami. Um, <laughs> no, everybody in Miami. That's what you don't know. <laughs> everybody in Miami right now. <laughs> hey, if, if they, if they, that look anything like Nashville looked yesterday or hey, New Orleans last Miami. week when I was there? Um, yeah, COVID don't exist no more as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Blitzburg County episode two is coming oh, whenever it? something major happens. It's been nothing but OTAs yeah. in the Steelers camp. So, I mean, unless you want me to talk about OTAs, then I mean, it, it, all that could be summed up in just one sentence. There, everything's clicking. Najee's getting acclimated to to the city. That is pretty much it. So, unless something else shakes. It's, it's not much contact in Steelers camp right now. So, hey, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, in that vein, School and Washita will definitely be back this month. Sorry about the hiatus with the playoffs and my sickness. I had to be a part um, of that. And shout out also to, like, there's, like, a new generation of athlete and rappers, right, so to speak, too. So you had, like, the Jay-Z and LeBron mesh, right? Um, and you got James Harden, who's a little baby, I believe um that are collabing and getting stuff done so shout out to that um that's going on brown about to drop something too who brown that does not be capping that's not be capping he actually is is getting ready uh so i guess oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know i know what you're yeah, talking about i, I, I want yeah. capping uh i know i've oh, been yeah. a little bit with my brown but yeah. now he actually working on something too which i think yeah and, and lastly before uh we we wrap up uh if you guys can see my name uh shout out to liz cambage oh, yeah. um, for the hell of a game that she had yesterday against the Mystics. I think if I – forgive me if I don't remember the stat line. I think it was like 25 and 11 for uh, for the Aces. So, shout out to her. She done went viral with that one uh, <laughs> that one shot. Yeah. She caught it in the post and was laughing. That's hilarious. So, hey, block work. That's all I'm going to say. Block work. Gotta, so, shout out Liz Cambage, man. Got to have fun. Got to have fun. Also, before we move off, man, shout out to Moneybag, yo. Ricky of the year. About John Morant. 
Let's get it. That's what I'm nice. starting. Now he got to make a new song called Top Five. Right. <laughs> Literally. But, uh, and one update, let's turn up, said in the beginning of the show. New episode, news is happening now, like Trevor said, waiting on news. Uh, one finna drop an episode, we know actual official news. So, uh, news be official Tuesday. So, I'll be doing live episode Tuesday, talking about Julio Jones for the Titans. So, that's all we got. Till next time, peace.